Hi, I'm Daniel Clark, and today I'm reviewing The Map of the World by Elaine Nicolinon, which was shortlisted for the T.S. Eliot Prize 2023. This is the poet's tenth collection, 50 years after her first, published by independent Irish publisher The Gallery Press. So here we go, The Map of the World, here to make the shortlist a little bit shorter. Seriously though, even though it's rule-breakingly short, this collection spans millennia, millions of miles, and several languages. We're talking about a poet who's lived through a lot, seen a lot, and still has more to say, and new ways to say it. Like a poem, a map freezes in time and space one particular reality. For map makers, there's little room for uncertainty. A map offers a definitive explanation of space. But in a world that's always changing, a map can become outdated almost as soon as it has been made. Nihuilanon's poems are space-searching, shape-shifting sketches that seem to spill over the edges of a traditional 2D map. Nothing can be compared to anything else. Was that a shadow? The shadow of a bird? The poems are saturated with spaces. Many of the places are palimpsests. The monuments built in Nihuilanon's 1972 debut still hold firm. But here she is, 50 years later, exploring how the world has changed. When I asked the way to the well, people knew what I meant, and at last, I found the place. In the map of the world, there is a feeling of rediscovery, of re-navigating vaguely familiar places. The combination of old and new poems feels like giving a digital map the latest update. New buildings keep appearing, but the landmarks stay the same. I looked for a slip of paper to keep the page I reached, but I touched only the bandage I had ripped away from my skin. It will do to mark the place. Landmarks can exist within the imaginary worlds that books create. When the book is closed, the place needs to be mapped out. But no matter how many times the poet closes the book, it won't stay shut. After all, Nihuilanon's is a life lived through poetry and stories, lived through languages, resolutely plural. I could not have made it up, the poet writes knowingly in the opening poem, as if to dare her reader to dismiss these poems as mere musings. Translations into Irish and from Romanian to English reaffirm the plurality and make the collection a wide-reaching conversation. Fear spreads like water over the whole earth, and Noah's Ark is still not finished. Plurality takes shape too, in Nihuilanon's remembering of history. Contrary to what history books all too often would have us believe, the past is not a monolithic blob. There are billions of voices in the margins. Some we would rather silence, some we would rather forget. But the poet is attentive to them all. The man with his shirt open leered at my aunt breastfeeding, and the boy was there too. Nihuilanon asks us to consider whose story is worth listening to. As has been the case for millennia, Non-human animals are in these scenes, but barely given a second thought. A goose on the table, half butchered. A small naked dog under a chair. What can we ever know of their story? As the poet writes, how can I even ask? Who would I ask? It was never the point of the story. Beautifully timed, exquisitely paced, the map of the world recasts places and times as characters. This is a collection full of meaning and understanding, as well as an understanding that meaning cannot ever be full.